Okay, good evening. Today is Wednesday, January 27th. And I would like to call this meeting of the Macomb Township Board of Trustees order. The time is 7 p.m. Say the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I would like to ask the Board of Trustee members when responding to the roll call, please state your name and announce uh, where you are, or announce that you are remote from Macomb Township in Macomb County in the state of Michigan. Thank yes. Trustee Cusimano. Frank Cusimano appearing remotely from Macomb Township, Macomb County, Michigan. Thank you. Trustee Lucido. Peter Lucido, remotely from Macomb Township in Macomb County, Michigan. Thank you. Trustee Oliver. Trustee Oliver from Macomb County, remotely from Macomb County, Michigan. Thank you. Trustee Nevers. Uh, Trustee Nevers, uh, remotely from Macomb Township and Macomb County, Michigan. Thank you. Treasurer Drolette. Leon Drolette, uh, present from Macomb County and Macomb Township, Michigan. Thank you. Clerk Posey, remote from Macomb Township in Macomb County in the state of Michigan. Thank you. Supervisor Viviano. Supervisor Viviano, remotely from Macomb Township in the county of Macomb, state of Michigan. All members are present. Thank you. Moving on to the approval of the agenda. Clerk Posey, are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to the agenda? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have a uh, proposed to postpone item number 16 until further notice. Also a proposed add-on under new business under item number 17, resolution to authorize township supervisor to execute closing of property on 26 Mount Road. That's all I have. Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So a uh, second by trustee Kuzmano. Discussion on the agenda. Hearing none, there is a motion by Clerk Posey, seconded by Trustee Cusmano, to approve the amended uh, agenda. Clerk Posey, we please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Clerk Posey, yes. Trustee Cusmano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. Treasurer Jolette? Yes. Supervisor Viviano? Yes. Motion carries. On to approval of the bills. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Mr. Chairman, I got a question on an item on the uh, 33 pages of approved bills. Okay. Specifically, um, one issue, and I thank your uh, finance department for answering all my questions regarding uh, the other matters, which I am satisfied with the answers that have been given. On Carlisle Wartman Associates, there is a, which is a firm, out of, a consulting firm out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. There is a charge under voucher 110958 for the amount of $2,927.50 for sign ordinance. And I was wondering if someone could tell me whether or not they have written a proposed ordinance or changed a sign ordinance or what that is about. I believe that is about the sign ordinance that we had amended uh, due to COVID. We allowed businesses to put out some temporary signage to indicate that they were open for a carry out or other such signs uh, until such so I was the one who asked the planning department to do that, and I believe we adopted that the second meeting in December. Or? Okay, so that's an old business that's been voted on by the board. If I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ms. Trustee Cusimano, I know there's been some concerns with regards to our sign ordinance um, on the ZBA as well. So that may also include some review. We've had them do um, in a, an attempt to do some amendments and updating to the sign ordinance. Okay, which which department would have been in charge of this? 
interaction with the firm Carlisle Wartman and Associates. Mr. Mr. Doc on the line. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, yes, uh, some of that. This this is largely uh, uh, dealing with uh, what Clerk Posey mentioned, the signed ordinance being updated. Uh, so Carlisle Wartman went through and drafted a update to our signed ordinance. Uh, in fact, just today we met with the building department uh, to review some of that draft language. Uh, and we're still moving forward with it, but there's still some, some tweaks that will need to be done. Uh, but it's, it's with regard to our overall sign ordinance, not the, the COVID related signage. Incorrect. So Mr. Chairman, I understand that we'll be voting on whatever they've drafted. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Bach and the, and the planning commission put something forward. Yes, we'll be voting on it. Okay, and just uh, a question for legal counsel. Is there going to be any problems with a consultant writing a sign ordinance in regards to the practice of law? That would be my question, in his opinion. I don't think there's a problem as long as it's reviewed um, by counsel, which I'm sure I, I have not personally reviewed the sign ordinance, but I'm sure counsel will review it before it's uh, submitted for approval. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's, that's I'm satisfied that that concludes my questions on the bill run. Thank you, Mr. Cusmano, and thank you, Clerk Posey and Mr. Bach for clarification. Um, is there any further discussion on the bill run? So we have a motion on the floor by uh, Treasurer Gillette, supported by Clerk Posey, to approve the bill run. Clerk Posey, will you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Treasurer Jolette? Yes. Clerk Posey, yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. And Supervisor Viviano? Yes. The motion carries. Approval of the previous me meeting minutes from January 13th, 2021. Motion Ready? to approve. Support. Do any of the board members have any additions or deletions? Any discussion? Hearing none, there's a motion by Clerk Posey, supported by Treasurer Gillette, to approve the previous meeting's minutes. Clerk Posey, would please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Clerk Posey, yes. Treasurer Gillette? Yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. And Supervisor Viviano? Yes. On to the consent agenda. The consent agenda are items that are routine in nature and they come before the board from time to time. Is there a motion? I move to approve the uh, consent agenda on items five through seven or through eight, rather through seven in their entirety. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, there is a motion by Treasurer Gillette, supported by Clerk Posey, to approve the consent agenda items. Clerk Posey, would please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Treasurer Gillette? Yes. Clerk Posey, yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. Supervisor Viviano? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, now is the time for public comments. Uh, Please remember if you have a comment to make, uh, we have a three minute time limit. Uh, Mr. Ivanowski, can you please open the floor to the public? Uh, yes, if you have any questions you would like to ask, please raise your hand if you're on a computer connection or on the phone, press star nine. A moment. For anyone trying to make comment. At this moment, I'm not seeing anybody willing to speak, Mr. Supervisor. All right, seeing as we have no one wanting to speak tonight, I will close the floor to public comment. Moving on to item number eight, water and sewer. We have a request to adopt the annual Michigan Department of Transportation performance resolution for government agencies for renewal of the annual construction permit for operations within state high, highway right-of-way. 
Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll move on that. Second. Kurt Langland, would you like to give us some background, please? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, tonight, Water and Sewers in front of you asking we approve this annual permit by MDOT. Um, as you know, there are two MDOT roads in the township, one being Hall Road, M59, and one being Grashit, a small portion of Grashit down in the south corner. Um, it, it's our basic boilerplate uh, uh, annual permit that we uh, get approved every year by MDOT. There is no fee for this permit, but MDOT asks that we approve, to get this approved annually, and um, this will have to be uh, voted on by a means of resolution, uh, board resolution. So I recommend we approve this, this, this agenda item. Thank you. A resolution or does it need to vote on it? It's a vote on it. It's a vote on it, okay. Um, is there any more discussion on this item? All right, hearing none, we have a motion by Trustee Oliver, supported by Trustee Nevers, to adopt the annual Michigan Department of Transportation Performance Resolution for government agencies for renewal of the annual construction permit for operations within a state highway right of way. For closing, we please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Treasurer Drolette? Yes. Clerk Posey, yes. Supervisor Viviano? Yes. That motion carries. Thank you, board. Item nine is a request to initiate the process for a secretary. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Are you able to give us some background here? Sure, thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, I come before you tonight to request um, to initiate the recruitment process for a secretary. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Director has been notified by one of his employees of their intent to retire at the beginning of May. Um, therefore, he has requested that Human Resources start the, uh, in, to initiate the recruitment process and get somebody on board um, about the same time that she's going to be leaving, maybe a few days sooner just to get some overlap going. Um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Ms. Art. Is there any discussion on this motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Uh, so this is just a replacement for a secretary who's retiring? That is correct. And it's within the budget of that department? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes my questions. Mr. Kuzmano, any more discussion? Okay, hearing none, there is a motion by Clerk Posey, supported by Treasurer Gillette, to, to initiate the recruitment process for his secretary. Clerk Posey, we can call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Clerk Posey, yes. Treasurer Gillette? Yes. C Trustee Kuzumano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. And Supervisor Viviano? Yes. Motion carries. Item 10, a rezoning request, agricultural to residential one family urban located on the south side of 24 mile road and one quarter mile east of Tomeo Plain. ID number. 08-16-100-005. Still moved. Support. Bob, can you give us some background, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Supervisor uh, and board. Uh, this parcel is about 19 acres, as you mentioned, so 24 mile uh, in section 16, um, a little east of Colonial Plank. Uh, parcel is currently zoned agriculture and the petitioner is requesting this time. Petitioner's Your requesting car turned off. Yep. R1 residential. Uh, the rezoning would be consistent with the current master plan. Uh, it is additionally uh, immediately adjacent to another uh, residential development known as Wellington Estates. And at the January 19th planning commission meeting, uh, this request was recommended for approval by unanimous vote by the planning commission and I'm available for any questions. 
Mr. Chairman, I got a couple questions. Um, there was a public comment um, period afforded the public on this matter before the Planning Commission, is that correct? I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Was, was there public comment available for the public to have their voices heard on this matter? Yes, there was. And did any members of the public avail themselves of that opportunity? Uh, yes, we had about 15 attendees uh, for that meeting and probably seven or eight uh, spoke up and, and addressed their uh, thoughts on this project. W were they in support or were they, um, uh, was the prevailing opinion against it? Uh, there, largely the concern was uh, what would happen with drainage uh, from this property, there were concerns of, of drainage coming from this property into their uh, backyards, uh, which is something that would be addressed in later stages of the development. There was no issues regarding um, traffic patterns and congestion? Uh, 24 mile was, was brought up by a couple uh, people uh, as being a congested roadway already uh, and just potentially adding traffic to it. Uh, again, that's something that, uh, you know, there's no development on the table at this point. It's just a rezoning request. Um, so there's, there's no uh, review of traffic that would be necessary at this time. All right. So at what stage would a traffic study be appropriate, in your opinion? If the landowner, uh, if it were rezoned and they came forward with a development, uh, at that point, we would look at all of the the conditions, including traffic, if we thought it would be an issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That that ends my questions. Thank you, Mr. Kuzmano. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Hearing none, we have a motion by Clerk Posey, supported by Treasurer Gillette, to allow the uh, rezoning request from agricultural to residential one-family urban located on the south side of 24 Mile Road and one quarter mile east of Romeo Plank Road, permanent parcel ID 08-16-100-005. Clerk Posey, will you call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Clerk Posey, yes. Treasurer Jolette? Yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. And Supervisor <laughs> Viviano? Yes. Motion carries. Chair, sure, I'd like to move items 11 and 12 uh, in their entirety as they both deal with the same parcel. So I hope that we can address them. Any questions you know, to both items 11 and 12, move this one motion. We have a second. Second. So uh, items 11 and 12, we have item 11 is a deviation request, multiple deviations, Macomb Town Center, two, three, four and five located on the north side of 24 Mile Road in east of Romeo Plank Road, permanent parcel ID 08-09-300-017. And item 12 is a site plan from the home town center two, three, four and five located on the north side of 24 Mile Road in east of Romeo Plank Road, permanent parcel ID number 08-09-300-017. Uh, can you give some background on these two motions, please? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, Macomb Town Center, South Phase One, uh, you know, in the nearest completion of the petitioner is seeking uh, to move forward with phases two, three, four, and five of the development. Uh, in order to do that, they are seeking some approval of deviations as well as the site plan for those phases of the development. Uh, it will be directly east of the existing Phase One development. Uh, there are a number of unique challenges, including drains and utility easements, uh, that have required them to uh, make some minor changes to the development, contrary to what would typically be allowed in the town center area. Uh, these include a few lots that are slightly longer than the three to one ratio that would typically be allowed, uh, and a few that are wider than 70 feet, which is the maximum allowed uh, property within the town center area, as well as a few lots that would become double front end lots. Uh, the town center committee did meet on january 25th and recommended approval for all of the requested deviations by unanimous vote 
uh, and uh, should the deviations uh, be supported, uh, they then would like to have approval of their phase two through five uh, site plan. Uh, again, this was reviewed by the Town Center Committee on January 25th uh, and approved by a unanimous vote, and it is supported by uh, the staff at the township. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bach. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Okay, hearing none, there's a motion on the floor by Treasurer Joel Hetz, part by Clerk Posey, to approve the deviation request for multiple deviations in the hometown center two, three, four, and five, located on the north side of 24 Mile Road and east of Romeo Plank Road, permanent parcel ID 08-09-300-017. And to approve the site plan at the home town center two, three, four, and five, located on the north side of 24 Mile Road and east of Romeo Plank Road, permanent parcel ID 08 09 300 017. Clerk Posey, will you call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Treasurer Drillette? Yes. Clerk Posey, yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. And Supervisor mm -hmm. Viviano? Yes. The motion carried. Moving on to item 13 is the is a second amendment to the consent judgment approval for Elite Corporate Park located in the south side of 23 Mile Road, west of Romeo Plank Road, permanent parcel ID 08-20-100-018. Chair, I support the second amendment. Second. Bye. Yes, thank you, Mr. Supervisor and Board. Uh, Elite Corporate Park, as you mentioned, south of 23 Mile, about a half mile west of Romeo Plain. Um, development uh, has a site plan that was previously approved, as well as an existing consent judgment. As part of that consent judgment, uh, a self storage facility uh, would be allowed on unit number three of this development. Um, this self storage facility is proposed to uh, include some spaces in front that would allow for loading and unloading of personal vehicles. Uh, as they uh, utilize the self storage facility itself. Uh, this amendment to the consent judgment would allow for that loading and unloading to take place uh, in these spaces on the front side of the building. Typical uh, ordinance would not allow loading and unloading in front of a building. Uh, and we did review this internally uh, and made some revisions from their first request uh, to make sure it specifically stated personal vehicles so that this would not set a precedent within the township. Uh, and it is unique to this type of facility being storage. Uh, again, it's been reviewed by Township Departments and is being recommended for approval. And thank you, Mr. Bach. Is there any discussion on this motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. If we were not to approve the second amendment to the consent judgment, what would be the consequences, if any? Increase litigation? Would it reopen the judgment? What what would be the consequence or the anticipated consequence if we didn't approve something like this? And this was agreed to by our council. Is that my understanding? Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. We did review it and agree to it. Okay. And was what I indicated earlier true that that basically we'd just be before the judge bickering and running up legal fees to to settle the issue <laughs> and that that possibility would certainly exist if they if they pushed back against it correct okay thank you mr chairman that concludes my questions thank you mr Kuzma. any further discussion okay hearing none we have a uh, motion by treasurer gillette supported by clerk posey to approve the second amendment to the consent judgment approval corporate park located on the south side 23 Mile Road, west of Romeo Plank Road, permanent parcel ID 08 20 100 018. Clerk Posey, will you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chair. Treasurer Gillette? Yes. Clerk Posey, yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. And Supervisor <laughs> Viviano? Yes, that motion carries. Moving on to item 14 is a request to approve change order number 10. Your motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. 
Chief, can you give us some background, please? Uh, Mr. Supervisor, members of the board, uh, as the owner representative of the uh, public safety building, I'm recommending uh, the approval of uh, change order number 10, which consists of uh, seven items. Uh, and I'll apologize, uh, the memo that was provided, uh, I left off uh, one of the items uh, by mistake, uh, so I will cover it uh, this evening. Uh, item number one is a $570 credit uh, to the project uh, due to the elimination of uh, six arborvitaes uh, around the generator that are no longer needed. Uh, item number two is a $12,419 charge uh, to the project due to uh, poor soil conditions on the north side of the apparatus bays. During site preparation, the contract uh, discovered a section of poor soil, which required additional removal of that soil uh, to get below the poor conditions and backfilling of material. The township's third party consultant, along with the architect and the township agreed uh, with the need for uh, the removal and the additional material. And in addition, uh, Supervisor Dunn was aware of uh, the issue and approved uh, the request uh, at the time that it was discovered. Uh, item number three uh, is a, a, a no charge item due to the HVAC contractor needing uh, to extend hot water piping and relocation of a thermostat in the uh, front entrance vestibule. Item number four is a $3,744 credit to the project for uh, revisions of the channel framing for the steel trusses uh, on the second floor of the administrative area. Uh, item number five is a $7,200 credit to the project uh, due to revision of the uh, shingles uh, as a result of uh, COVID delay issues with the manufacturer. Uh, the change was approved uh, at the time by the township and the architect. Item number six uh, is a $44,208 charge to the project due to the installation of the WestNet uh, fire alerting system. When the township contracted with the county to provide dispatching to the fire department, uh, the contract included the WestNet uh, alerting system. The alerting system alerts personnel when there's a call for their station, controls uh, lights throughout the station, and it will turn off uh, the gas appliances uh, to make sure that anything that may be on uh, is off and is not of a fire hazard. Uh, the charges to install all the conduit, the wiring, and the antennas uh, necessary for that system to work. Uh, item number seven is a $2,020 charge for the installation of six additional sprinkler heads uh, under the mezzanine in the sheriff garage. The additional sprinkler heads will provide uh, additional protection in the event that there's a fire under the mezzanine. And at the time that the uh, uh, fire suppression contractor was on site, I did require the additional uh, sprinkler heads at the time that that was being installed. Uh, all of the items presented are necessary and will not change the final price of the project. All items will be paid for from the contingency line item. So I've included all of the documents uh, relative to each item. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. Um, and just so the public knows, uh, the original change order number 10 was slightly more than this. Uh, and you and I discussed it in your recommendation in my agreement, we actually removed a number of items that we thought were optional or could be addressed at a later date, correct? That's correct. And uh, at this point, we are still on track to come in under or, select or at budget on the project as a whole. Uh, that's correct. And we are doing everything we can to be under budget. Great. Question, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chief, um, an item number six, the one uh, that we're doing in, in order to accommodate the county's dispatch services, uh, is any of that covered by our contract with the county? Uh, well, it was when the original contract was signed, um, the fee for the technology, which this included for the other three stations, was part of that original contract. Station one wasn't included because uh, we didn't want to put the money into station one knowing that it was going to be tore down within uh, several months. So um, when we were doing construction, we knew that it would be coming, but uh, there was nothing that could happen until we got to the point where the building was up and they would be able to know exactly uh, how much conduit and the wiring and everything else that would be needed. So that's why uh, we had to wait until we got to this point where we're at in the project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any more questions on this or any discussion? Okay, hearing none, there is a motion by 
Trustee Oliver, supported by Clerk Posey, to approve change order number 10. Clerk Posey, we call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chair. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Clerk Posey, yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. Treasurer Drolette? Yes. Supervisor Viviano? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 15 is a poverty exemption resolution revision. Move. Second. Uh, Mr. Hickey, can you give us some background? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, board members. Uh, if you remember back in November, we uh, uh, passed uh, the original resolution. Since then, the, uh, the governor signed a Senate bill making changes to uh, the uh, uh, guidelines for the poverty, poverty exemptions. Two of the changes that we did change from the original uh, resolution was we had to remove the word supervisor from the statute, making it clear that only the Board of Review can make, change, uh, make grant or deny poverty exemptions. The other change that we made is before we required uh, property owners to pay at least three and a half percent of their income. We can no longer do that. They, we can either grant a 100% reduction, a 50% reduction, or a 25% reduction. And those are the only two changes that we really made to the uh, resolution. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions or any discussion on this item? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Was this language uh, drafted in house or was it form language approved by MTA? Well, the, the, uh, it wasn't through the MTA, it was through the State Task Commission that the uh, uh, summary changes were, were uh, provided. I think it was in your packet. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Kuzma, Trustee Kuzma. Mr. Chairman, I have one question. Sure. Do we have an updated amount on how many residents have applied for the property exemption? In 2020, we had two, and in 2019, we had two. And I think only one was granted in each year. Anything further? Okay, we have a motion by Treasurer Gillette, supported by Trustee Lucido, to Approve the poverty exemption resolution revision. Clerk Posey, we call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chair. Treasurer Drolette? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. Clerk Posey, yes. Supervisor Viviano? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. He was postponed. Mm. So item 17 is the add-on. Um, item 17 is a resolution to authorize the township supervisor to execute the closing of property on 26 Mile Road. Motion. So moved. Support. Uh, this resolution is necessary. Uh, the title company uh, putting the documentation together for this closing is asked this to be included so that they are assured that I have the proper authorization necessary to sign all the documentation. Is there any discussion on this motion? Okay, hearing none, we have a motion by Clerk Posey supported by Trustee Lucido uh, to approve the resolution to authorize the Township Supervisor to execute closing of property on 26 Mile Road. So Posey, we call the roll. Yes, Mr. Supervisor. Before my vote, I would just like to clarify that um, I was not in favor in the purchase of this property. However, it was the board's wish at the time. So I will vote yes for you to execute the closing on the property. Uh, so it was the board's wishes. So noted. And Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Cusimano? I would like to state that I was not on the board at this time. I would be adverse to that decision. But consistent with the fulfillment of the obligations made by the previous board, I will vote yes at this time. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. Treasurer Gillette? I'll echo the uh, comments of the clerk and uh, Trustee Lucido and vote yes. Supervisor yeah. Viviano? Yes. Resolution is adopted. 
All right, moving on, we are going to get an update from our interim legal counsel, Mr. Allett. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Viviano. Uh, Supervisor Viviano asked me to prepare just a short presentation. Uh, I think probably the best way to phrase it is a summary of what we've uh, noticed or discovered in the two months or so that we've been acting uh, proudly as interim township council. Uh, and the purpose of this is one, just an understanding of what we've been doing at Bodmin and I think hopefully to guide the board as they make a decision on ret eventually retaining uh, permanent council. Uh, there are two main areas I wanna cover uh, that I think will summarize things nicely. One is the complexity and the variety of the matters that we see. And the second part is the, the volume of the matters we see. On the first point, as it relates to complexity and variety, uh, one of the fun challenges of, of working in municipal law is that Every day is different, every issue is different, and it covers an awful lot of specialties. Uh, fortunately at Bodmin, as a larger firm, we have the ability to assign the right expert to the right type of problem. But just by way of quick example, uh, we've handled matters that uh, touched on litigation, employment and workplace law, criminal law, real estate law, corporate law, contract law, property tax law, municipal law, bond law, um, and uh, insurance issues and condemnation issues and the list really goes on and I, I don't need to belabor the point but you know similar to representing a large corporation as general counsel you see a little bit of everything uh, and it um, I, I think it behooves any municipality just like any corporation to be able to have expertise in those areas and not just always be relying on, on generalist services or or maybe somebody that's a little bit out of their depth uh, no, my dad used to always tell me, know your limitations. And uh, I think that definitely applies uh, in terms of municipal legal work. The, the second issue I wanted to address is the volume. Macomb Township is, a, is an active community. There's a lot of development. It's a large community. And there is a lot of legal work. Um, it's a, as all of you know, it's a deadline-driven business, the legal profession. There are a lot of balls in the air at the same time. New issues are arising old issues need attention, um, and, and it's difficult, in fact, impossible to control the volume of what's coming in, the type of work that's coming in, um, et cetera. And so evaluating it, you know, sort of using it as the difference between, say, having a permanent in-house counsel versus a law firm with a slightly deeper bench, given that volume, I think one thing we did see is the difficulty uh, having one full-time in-house counsel uh, the difficulty in managing that volume and that variety of legal work. Uh, there were deadlines that were behind, um, some deadlines that were missed, um, and, and a lot of catching up to do. And, you know, a large, I think, part of that is just the sheer volume of, of one person trying to handle that. And I think that leads to two issues to consider as a township. Um, one is the deadline issue and staying on top of matters and dealing with them in a timely fashion. And the second part of that is getting caught in the need to catch up or stay on top of that and engaging outside counsel uh, maybe more frequently uh, than, than you guys would want because it th that's an added expense and it's more difficult to manage the cost of a third party uh, that's engaged instead of the, the lawyer the township ultimately ends up with or the law firm um, being able to manage that contract, those costs and um, and prevent that need to constantly be looking outside and, and sort of piling on what's already, legal work is just expensive by nature. Uh, so those are the two main grounds I wanted to cover. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I, I think the approach the township has taken, um, you know, we've assisted a little bit in the process. Uh, there's some excellent um, candidates out there and I think the township is gonna be in great hands. And I just wanted to finish by saying, uh, if this is our last meeting as interim township council, it's been a tremendous honor. My firm was very proud to be a part of this, very excited, and I've enjoyed working with everybody I've worked with, uh, and, and the Bodman team has has really enjoyed uh, the opportunity. So thank you for that. You're welcome, Mr. Hollett. Uh, I think we're going to have you for one more meeting, though. Um, Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will echo your comments about the expertise of, of the lawyers I've dealt with. I think I've dealt directly with, including yourself, six different attorneys on six, six separate areas of expertise. 
all six have been very impressive. Um, uh, maybe we should have hired Erica. <laughs> um, I do want to. Ask you, I highly recommend her. <laughs> I I do want to uh, ask you to touch on one other thing, though. Uh, how do you foresee the transition going? Um, have you been able to get our matters organized in a way that'll that will be helpful to the, the next coming the next incoming attorney? Yes, we we've, we've uh, put a lot of effort into making sure uh, that things now are in an organized fashion. So both at the district court level and the general uh, township level, everything is organized. It's uh, we're preparing a, a drive essentially where we save all of our documents, the pleadings, the files, the correspondence, which will be easily transferable. Um, you know, we're prepared to meet with whomever the new township attorneys are immediately to begin that process of transition, assist in any way that we can, but we certainly anticipate a very smooth transition and there really uh, that I can think of is nothing that is uh, incredibly pressing. In other words, there's no trial tomorrow or a tax appeal that has to be dealt with immediately. Uh, where we can, we've gotten extensions uh, so that new township attorney can deal with it in the manner that they see fit. Uh, anything that we've had to deal with you know, we've, we've done it in, in uh, conjunction with the township, but have it in a posture that, that transitioning it to new attorneys should be a, a fairly simple process, all things considered. Thank you. This time, do any of the board members have any questions for our council regarding the representation of us? John, thank you for helping us out. Sounds like you did a great job with the um, people that was here and I think you're going to do a good job, it sounds like, with uh, helping us transition in the end. So, again, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would just echo that sentiment. I appreciate his professionalism and the clarity of his answers to the question, legal questions and issues that I've posed. Thank you, sir. You're a gentleman, and we appreciate your help in this transitional period. Thank you very much. That means a lot. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Mr. Howlett. I appreciate the update. Um, we're going to move on to board comments. Uh, Trustee Kuzmano. Nothing today, uh, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Oliver. Yes, I always have some. You know, <laughs> I'll make it quick. We are the Planning Commission had the, their first Zoom meeting with all the members. We had it here at the um, Town Hall worked out pretty good. So we're up and running with Zoom at planning. Great. Thank you, and that's it. <laughs> Trustee Lucido. Numbers? Again, I have nothing for this evening. Treasurer Gillette. I'm good. Good posy. Well, I know that um, Roger Cardamone, my deputy, is on the line this evening taking minutes, and I just wanted to wish him a very happy birthday, and I want to thank him for sharing it with the Board of Trustees this evening, and I hope you get an ice cube or two later on this evening. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday Roger. Roger. <laughs> happy birthday, Roger. Uh, and that just leaves me. Uh, really, the only order of business I wanted to mention um, is something we touched on a moment ago. Uh, we will, the, the committees to select the new council and a new HR director have made their selections and they are gonna present them to the board of, full board of trustees at a special meeting uh, to be held on Monday, February 1st at 6 p.m. So if you would like to attend, uh, please look for that link on our website, uh, which should be available shortly. And that's all I have tonight. Supervisor, move to adjourn. Second, Trustee Cusmano. Posey, we, we have a motion to adjourn. Put Posey, we call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Treasurer Drolet. Yes, Madam Clerk. Trustee Cusmano. Yes, Madam Clerk. Steve Lucido. Yes. Trustee yes, Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. Clerk Posey? Yes.
Supervisor Viviano. Yes, Madam Clerk. <laughs> this meeting is adjourned. Have a good night, everyone.